So the Koji start. You think I need Last Koji round in the Watch half. this. Watch this round. Spend it. Okay. Okay. Right. Are you ready? I'm gonna push on the side with double satchel. Ow. Give me a. Give me a, a recon. Oh. Probably heaven. Satchel out. There's one on top of ramps. There's one screen. What's your favorite character and what's your favorite map? Uh I've been playing a lot of rays. I probably wanna learn Phoenix. And my favorite map is the three side I think it's Haven. Pretty sure that's Haven. Haven. You're right. So I wanna I'm gonna go into custom, we're gonna go on Haven. Um oh. what's your what's your go-to character on Haven? In an ideal scenario. Wait, I play Rays every every map? Okay. I regardless that. of side scenario situation, I hit insta lock by one trick. My man, that's what I did too. That was how I got max rank in beta. So like only radiant every single game. Okay, so you have zero Counter-Strike experience, right? You never really played Counter-Strike? Zero. I played like the game maybe once ever. We're talking like a full game, like once ever. Okay, let's say like this. How confident are you? If I played on a controller, do you think I would be able to outfrag you? Menda will f What's your favorite bomb site if you're on defense? Where do you like going the most? Uh, Garage or A? 30 seconds That's a good bomb sites. And do you play Phantom or, or Phantom or Vandal? Okay, I always I always feel like it's Phantom on defense and Vandal for long maps or offense. Usually I Phantom on offense too, if it's like a short map, range map. But the set, I just spam Vandal. So, have you watched any tournaments? Okay, I watched like a couple games. Mm -hmm. And do you notice that literally every pro plays basically Phantom all the time? Yeah, yeah. But so... Like the thing is, if you are more comfortable with the other weapon, you should just use it. Because either way, the way you learn using both weapons will kind of like tie together eventually. I think that the Phantom is a lot more forgiving. So if you make the mistake yes. of like, you start moving when you're shooting a little bit, kind of lose control over your spray. It's just a lot easier to like take back that control. And it's much easier to just get lucky off of that kill, right? Like if you spray with a Vandal, I'm really good at the Vandal, I think. But if I shoot five bullets, sometimes I just know I'm dead. There's no way I can save because I just missed like the spray. And I just lost control, right? With the yeah. Phantom, you can kind of always salvage by just kind of committing to the spray. Especially if you're crouched now, when crouching is so strong. But what's really important about this, this game... Do you know what counter strafing is? Like a stutter step? Yeah, you do this no. a, You do this AD motion, right? So you only, you only want to shoot when you stand still. You so the idea is you want to shoot when you stop, when you move side to side, right? So you never want to like, especially with spraying, you never really want to start shooting just a little bit before you stop. It's really important your first bullets are when you stop. So you can do that in two ways. In this game, it's really forgiving where you can just hold A and let go and shoot. Uh, Counter-Strike, what you had to do, I had to click the other button to kind of add the momentum of the opposite direction you're strafing to stop faster. But in this game, there's barely any difference in doing that. But it's really important that you get used to like that motion of going side to side and shooting when you stop. That is one of the fundamentals that you have to, because it's a little weird learning it if you haven't played the game before, because you're essentially timing shooting with releasing a button. When in most other games, you kind of time things by clicking another button, clicking them at the same time or clicking them in an order. In this game, you're kind of timing it with releasing a button and like waiting a little bit after you release to shoot. And it's not instant, so you can't do it at the same time because then you're still moving, right? So really learning this timing of moving back and forth and shooting the moment you stop is super super important that is the difference between just consistently getting the kills in your 1v1s and your duels and just dying right you just lose control of your spray you miss your first seven bullets and someone just shoots you in the head once you get aim punched and you have no control of shooting and i can't stress enough like just how important this fundamental is you want to make it a muscle memory so whenever you peek someone that's why everyone peeks them sideways so you can do that exact peek okay. So the more time you spend doing it, you know, if you're just like waiting for the round to start, even it's pistols, just kind of shooting this back and forth with the timing is really important. And first you want to learn just the timing of shooting. And then you want to learn of like moving the crosser to shoot with the timing of stopping. But what's really important is that you actually get this done. I can't stress it enough because if you 
always shoot your first bullet standing still and you have decent crosshair placement, you'll just get so many more kills. It is super, super important. And it's really basic too, because if you ever play Counter-Strike, everyone kind of knows how to do it. But it's it only really exists in those games, you know? Like if you play any of the games, you play you play like BR games, other shooter games in general, just FPS games. You don't really have this type of like this specific mechanic being such a fundamental yeah. piece of improvement, right? I was gonna say, I play Apex and I'm pretty sure that game is like you fucking run and gun <laughs> the entire time. Half the time you're sliding, jumping midair, just spraying, hip fire, aim down sides across the map, running around. But in this game, it's really important. And that adds into the next step of being able to do this. What is that term called? Is it slicing the pie? Basically, right? So let's say the easiest way to explain it is if you were if someone could be on the other side of a site and you're back here like how would you how would you look if you have time you're not rushing like you, you don't have to peek someone how would you clear it would you just run out and just see all the angles at once uh don't you like s first slowly check exactly the yeah the that that's what it means and right then you wide swing for the left side yeah so what you would do is specifically for this right there's not that that many angles to check but you want to check one angle at a time. Even and it could be you don't have to check this corner. You could check an angle here. If someone's here, here every single angle. You can take your time and just kind of take that peek and check that corner then move to the next one. And every single time you check one corner where you think someone could be, you put your crosshair where their head would be and you do this this counter strafe, right? You do this strafe out and stop and and aim. Even if you don't shoot. That's how you would clear. You would do it step by step. So if you are on this side of the site and I know you're either in garage or the box or in the corners, you check box, corners, garage, logs, right? You just take these few steps at a time and clearing so you can react to it and not just show yourself to three or four angles simultaneously, especially if there's more than one player. Mm. And then after that, when you do those two things and you need to focus on crosshair placement. Do you know what crosshair placement is? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. My chat yells at me every day. That, for it. That's good, right? You don't really have to understand why you're doing it. A really good way to learn is like, let's say you watch, you watch like ACU or you watch, you know, Brax or someone really good and you see where they put their crosshairs. If you mimic it and copy exactly what they do, you'll get kills. And then as you do it, you'll put yourself in those situations more where you realize, oh wow, the crosshair placement really helped me out there. Then you'll start understanding why you play as your crosshair where. No, no, I understand why the crosshair gets placed there. It's just uh, something you have to actively think of as yeah. you're playing the game. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like not because I'm like reading chat and then not really thinking about it. Yeah, it's but actually it's definitely like the most important thing. I feel. It's a uh, if you I, I, I don't know how to make a good comparison, but I think it's pretty accurate. Like in League of Legends, you're pretty like when you're laning in any lane, you're pretty actively focusing on the minions health, right? And you're only yeah. looking at the radar every now and then, right? You're focusing on what the enemy's like spacing and positioning could be. And you're kind of imagining, like you're kind of in your head seeing, okay, if Lee Sin hit his skill shot here, it would go in this direction, right? That's what you're constantly thinking about. Like just trying to like imagine that in your head. That's what helps a lot with crosshair placement. So if you're peeking this angle, even if no one could be there, you want to imagine in your head, what does it look like if Brimstone is right here, right? What would you see? And you'll be ready for it. Like where would his head be if he's playing this angle looking at I me? I think the hardest thing for me is when it comes to depth perception across the map, it gets difficult. I can understand if it's like flat surfaces and like I'm peeking. Yeah, no, it's, it's like difficult. It is. It's like from here to like there, there and it is like 100%. a slant. 100%. I, I just get fucked every time. Even in scrims now, I will sometimes just like be posted on an angle and I kind of throw it around because I've never held that angle before. So I'm not entirely sure where to put my crosshair. But the only way to like learn those specific angles, right? So if you peek long here, You'll learn where to peek because you've seen it yeah. before and you remember it. And it's really hard to really obviously know every single angle where they could swing from if they're close to the angle or far away from the angle. But it's important that as long as you're consciously thinking about it and then you swing out here, you see down long and like, oh, you were aiming at his feet. So you want to adjust that next time and the next time maybe aim a little bit too high. And then you'll kind of just start picking up on these things and it helps a lot if you play consistent positions. Like if you play garage, you play C. You'll learn where to put your crosshair pl placement perfectly for garage. You know exactly like if you're clearing C when you're trying to retake when they push, you know exactly like, okay, the way you like doing it is throwing a nade and then maybe taking these angles to see where they're playing. And then peeking long, where to put your crosshair up and down. And there's no shame in like taking your time and doing it when you're learning. If, if you're about to peek someone on plat, you're standing right where I'm sitting. 
you can take your time and just really like focus on where to put your crosshair first even if it takes like a little while just where do you put your crosshair and then you swing out and not stress yourself because it will just help learning like step by step i know you take notes when you play league right hell no <laughs> i've seen you i've seen you take notes on like how to improve and stuff like that in notepad uh, it's like it's different because if oh, it's, i'm actively it's... trying to improve at a game i it's different it's much different oh 100 percent, right because you're not playing this to go pro but the way you play yeah. the game it still should be that sort of step-by-step -step mentality when you are actively trying to improve on a game like when you take when you know when you're taking a peek and someone could be there you know you should where's where do you put your crosshair when do you stop your peek which angle do you take right kind of like you know exactly what to focus on step by step and consciously thinking about it and it is i found myself in situations like even in ranked and scrims where i sit pretty i sit really close to my monitor and i'll ask my teammates to look at the radar for me and update me because the angle i'm holding i need to be so focused on my crosshair right and you kind of want to do that all the time right so if i'm peeking if i'm peeking i'm really focused on my crosser on where this player will be and my only goal at that moment is focusing on getting that kill where do i put my crosser how far do i swing out right and even if it's like taking notes specifically to like just helping you remember like you know you have to aim further down or further down or further up see long when you're peeking it you could probably do that like mental notes because you don't have to focus on so many things at once it's a lot more like variability and league of legends and how you approach matchups and stuff but in this game it, it generally gun versus gun especially when you're like trying to learn but that's super important and i mean even running around in customs like this i still do it like all the time you run around you look where you throw your nades you practice your peaks even like if i'm just running in spawn what I'm doing, like if, I, if I'm in buy time, I'm in buy phase, I'm waiting for my teammates, I will still sometimes just like clear these angles, even though no one could be here, but I'm just practicing my crosser placement. Like, okay, I know where this specific spot is. And you always practice it. You always do it. Make it a, like a really solid fundamental so you don't have to actively think about it. And you'll do it autopilot. And do it all the time. Do it on your teammates. If you know no one's here, you're walking to see, you're like you just bought your gun, you're about to hold. You can peek out here. You can take these angles because the only way you get consistent at doing it is by doing it a lot because there's just so yeah. many angles. And then when you do that, you'll get so pissed off at someone holding an off angle and your teammates not trading the kill and, you, and you'll say something funny probably. But that's like the, the pain that comes with learning how to approach these scenarios. And then someone's just okay. standing in the middle of the open and you're just going to be super surprised. Right. Another thing that's also really good. Let's say let's say you're like a little unsure. You're taking a duel. You know, someone is in here. You can open your map. You can ping where they are and just put your crosser where they, above the ping. There. Ah. And even like wall banging, like if you're in a synth in CT and you know someone's in a specific there. spot, you can ping it and just spam it. It helps a lot. So like whenever I, for instance, when I like try to make an aggro playing garage by breaking this door right here, what I do is I ping the box out here and I spray there. And then I spray where the box is so if someone's peeking it. I know exactly where it is and my lineup is perfect, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I, you, I do that a lot. And that'll help you learn a lot about like, okay, I know exactly where the box is because you can give yourself a direct like reference yeah. of where to put your crosshair. Mm, wow, that's actually, you're fucking genius. You do it in all these corners like that you want to spam. Like this corner is really deep. So you ping it and then you spam it. And sometimes, yeah, pinging it probably going to get you killed, but you get faster at it. And overall, it's kind of yeah. worth it because You'll just learn like where to spam it. And that knowledge will yeah. will stick in your brain. Once you learn a map, like eventually when you do all these, when you have all the cross replacements, all the peeking, you aim through any part of the map and you can like basically know, like I'm looking at the hay boxes right now through the wall right here. Because I have this like direct reference of like, I know where I'm peeking in garage through the wall. I know where to put my crosshair to peek all these different angles, you know? And that helps so much. Just those fundamentals will just get you so many more kills. You don't really have to outsmart people because the people that you're going to be shooting at for a while are the people that won't play an angle on CT holding like from over here where I'm standing. They're not going to hold some kind of like corner angle on you. They're just going to sit in the mm -hmm. middle of the open and just look at a half smoke. Right. right. And that's how I you get those think, kills. I don't think at, at lower elos like mechanics matter. It's just like if you're in the right spot. The oh, right 100%. Thing, 100%. It's just a lot. You get kills a lot easier. But these are the fundamentals, right? And I think you can get up the ranks by just only having only aim, but no like 
knowledge of any of this counter strafing or anything mm -hmm. but you'll hit a wall right because these are the fundamentals of the game and shooting unless you play a shotgun but if you played shotgun primarily i probably would never coach you i would actually probably not follow you on twitter because shotguns piss me off so much uh so lily's a judge only player that's fine i'm lily said if i coach her i can borrow temi for a day so <laughs> lily is perfect in my eyes okay so how do you use your utility primarily do you just throw it when you feel like throwing it you kind of uh, I like to act, I used to throw my, my bomb immediately, but now I save it for put, like when I know they're pushing or to delay a push. That's pretty much perfect. Yeah. So there's two, for, on this map, there's two my, scenarios. So you, if you don't want to use it too aggressively, unless you're like doing a, a push, but you either you use it to stall because the map is so big on defense or you use it for retake. There's not really room for anything else. Because if you kind of use it and then someone pushes you from C and like there's four people C long and you don't have a grenade, you're kind of helpless because your teammates are yeah, across the map on A and stuff like that, right? But ideally, like you, even like if you want to use it aggressively, I obviously you're probably already really good at this, but just having like a pre planned sort of like reaction to if I get pushed here, I'm throwing this nade. If they do this, yeah, this yeah. is my response. Yeah, I'm sure you already know stuff like that, especially since you played ability heavy games, but that helps a lot. Uh I think for my boom bot, sometimes I throw it at the start of the round every time to see where they initially are. And I don't play with Sova as much, but I should probably hold on to that more too. Boom bot's weird. Yeah, I mean, I do it too. Sometimes I, I do it early, I get value off of it. Sometimes I do it early and just nothing. Um, but it, it's fine because Roomba is like kind of like, it is a weird ability because you'll find situations where like, oh dude, if I had it here, it would be so good. But then you also find situations yeah. where like, damn, I really should have used my Roomba because I just didn't get to use it at all, like for three rounds in a row. And I could have just cleared that cubby and not be uncertain, right? And I think Roomba is like the one ability you kind of use freely. I think it's a, uh, it's really good to use freely because it's good for info. You can use it to like clear the cubby. You can send it out garage to see if anyone's in grass, if they shoot it or not. And using it for info to make decisions is definitely like, that helps a lot. So. If you primarily use it for that and just use your nade to save it for push, you don't really need to save your Roomba that much. And most likely, if you have a well-placed grenade and your solid fundamentals, you'll still get a lot of kills without a Roomba anyway. So I don't think you have to rely on it. Do you know the uh, satchel tech or the double satchel to go really fast? Yeah, but I'm not that good at it. But I know it. I've seen like uh, like raised do Ray's players do it. It's like it, like depends on how you throw it or where you throw it to go. So. Out really quick. Honestly, you should learn it because you have one cool or lucky clip with it. Instant live stream fails and I know you're going to plug my Twitter, so. What the fuck? So an easy way to do it is you you place the satchel below you and you would walk off an edge and kind of pop it midair and then your second satchel will be instantaneous. Yep. Great. Perfect. <laughs> Yeah, you don't have you don't even have to jump it actually uh you run off so let's say like right here you can kind of throw it this is a little bit of a weird position but you can kind of throw it here and then just walk off and then instant double click satchel on the next one once you walked off so you ideally want it behind you and you want to pop the second uh, satchel a lot faster like instant i could probably swap character and swap and try i've actually never done it on this map but that's an, a pretty consistent way to do it is you find specific spots on the map that you know how to line it up with right and that'll help a lot. It is. Thirty seconds left. It's, it's like one of the the best. I think this is one of the the, the satchel is what makes Ray's fun to play. Yeah, hundred percent. Because you just do so much cool stuff. Satchel out. See that? Mm -hmm. That's so. You don't have to have it right behind you, right? So I, I just threw it right here. But that should work too. It's just about the timing on when you put the first one. And you don't have to look behind you on the second one. You just look straight down. Oh, okay. Go. It's just a timing thing. And once you have it, it's not hard, actually. It's all mm -hmm. about the timing. So once you click, you just have to click it at the right time. That wasn't bad. The, the, the second satchel, after the first one, look down instantly and just double click spam your satchel key. And you'll do it probably... Yeah, you hit the roof there, but that was good. You basically did it right there. Uh, I think if the look directly down in the melee do mm -hmm. it, makes it a lot oh, yeah. better. Yep. I see people use judge with this every a lot. 
Oh yeah, that shit pisses. Dude, if I die to a judge like that, yeah, that shit pisses me off beyond belief. It is so strong. You can do it with RPG too. And you can also use your RPG to knock you back to fight even further if you really want to style on people. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that. But yeah, you just find like a good way to do it is like, you know how to do it from here now, right? So you just kind of find these set positions to kind of learn where to do it from and see where it works and when it doesn't work. And then, especially on eco rounds, you just do it because it looks cool. And you'll always throw them if you pog use. <laughs> it's okay, it's there to farm chat, okay. Hey, I, playing games is only worthwhile if you farm chat, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. I, I... You know how the basics work of how close and far away you are to an angle and who sees the other first? I thought it was always the wide swinger has advantage. Like, so yeah, what you, yeah, what you're talking about is Pika's advantage, and that's that's it's pretty true in this game. Honestly, it can get pretty bad in this game. It's very ping reliant and stuff like that, but it also plays a matter for specifically for angles. Wait, maybe I can find you a picture that might explain it. All right, so I sent you a picture on Discord just now. Um, so he gets to see the uh, guy first. Yeah, so this is about who is closer to the other angle and who sees who first, right? So both okay. of those scenarios are pretty much the same. So the blue player, player B, he's closer to the, the wall and the angle that red is clearing. So red will see before uh, see blue before blue sees red. Okay. And that that's true on literally basically every single scenario on this map, or in every map in this game. Unless you're Silva, because Silva, Silva's cape like flies around and it's just visible from super far away. But what? Yeah, so his cape sticks really far out. So it's just like a thing. Some angles and some positions you can't play as Silva, but you can play as other characters because they'll just see you. But for instance, right? So if you are clearing, let's say you're playing right here on this angle, and you're holding it like this, right? Yeah. Really close, and I'm clearing it from all the way over here. We're pretty even right now, but if you're like, I can see your leg right now, right? Really? I see your leg, I see your foot. It's super obvious you're here. I would know exactly where your head is just from this specific angle. And I don't even know if you can see me. I can't, not at all. Yeah, and that is a pretty like small difference in the length between the angles. If I'm all the way down here and you're taking a little bit of like a, a longer angle still, I would see you before you see me. And now I see your foot and I see your side of your body. Ah, uh, that's be like really deep. Yeah, so well, it's not about being deep because you can hold this angle, here. but instead of holding it from here, you can hold that, that exact same basic angle from all the way over here, right? You see this here. exact same spot the entire time, and now you would actually be further away from the angle that I'm clearing here. than you are, right? So you would probably see me first. Might be a small, small difference, but it's just important knowing because if you're playing like a corner like this, you don't want to play it this close. Playing this far away is pretty good. This is a pretty good angle to play, right? You'll get that kill, you probably get traded. And if I clear it, I have to kind of show myself to you at the same time as you would show yourself to me. This this spot right here is a perfect description of this angle, right? So it's not yeah. as true for some characters in this game, but I call this a one and done. Because if you're playing in this corner and you're being pushed, you'll get a kill and a decent team will just clear it, die, and the second person will come out and pre-fire you and you're dead, right? Mm -hmm. Some characters like Jet and Reyna, they can use their abilities to get away and stuff. But it's important when you play these like corner spots, that you're kind of prepared to get swarmed and be aware that you don't want to play corner spots where they see you way before you see them, right? So this is a perfect one because if they want to swing and clear you, they have to commit so far into the site by the time they see you that even if you can't see them, they have to swing to kill you because you can't wall bang this angle at, like in the wall because it's so thick. So they have to swing on you and commit to you anyway. And if you have a team in helping you, it's really good. But as Rays, you don't really play those angles that often unless you play shotgun and stuff. Because if you're playing defense and they're pushing A, you can throw a nade, you know, yeah. here and just peek yeah, off yeah, of it. I'm usually yeah. holding like right Yeah, here. exactly. It's like super good. Yeah, jump spotting is super good. Um, it's just like a type of player that likes playing these corners. And a lot of them are really good to play. I think there's a lot of people, you should always generally have someone playing corners and sights, like especially over here and stuff. Because yeah. smokes and ability. Here, yeah, here. exactly. There's a lot. Like, I mean, you know, and like if Bomb is planted on A, how many times do you run out of CT and just died from either here or yeah. CT? Or, or like right here and they're crossing. It's yeah. impossible. And that's called a crossfire, right? So the crossfire is when we both hold the same angle and we have the same point of contact and we would shoot the player at the same time. So if we're both holding here, what I might do is we might hold a crossfire, but I play off of your contact. So you, someone peeks you, you shoot him, I swing out and shoot him too. So we're shooting from two different directions. It's you know, like it's an X, right? Like we, we just our lines crossed because of what we see and we're holding each other's angles, right? 
that is super mm -hmm. good if you do it with someone if you play with people a basic crossfire can get you like three to four kills with ease and trade huh? there, yeah i mean trading is trade. super solid if you can trade a kill and you have like a strong position to play it's super good like if you're playing here and you get a kill and your teammate you fall back your teammate pigs gets a kill and then you he dies and you trade that kill you just have number advantage it's like because you get the first kill and then you're trading kills back and forth you'll always end up with one more player than the enemy team um there's not that many of those angles on c site but on all the other maps there are angles where you can play like this this is just one of the most obvious ones and this map has some of the most obvious like corners you can sit in yeah yeah, yeah. you know they're gonna be there but you can't check everything sometimes yeah especially in this game there are five million corners if you check every corner oh, you just don't get anywhere playing the set it's like every there's like seven corners on every site sense pretty heavy on corners this map is just, uh, it's important, like, this map is super important on defense, especially as Raze, because this is one of the maps where Raze is probably considered a little bit worse than some of the other maps, because split, you have that high ground, a nade will just kill people. Like, you will just win, a, if they commit, there's a slow and a nade, you will win. But on this site, the odds are, no one's gonna funnel through a choke point and not come from a secondary, like, point of entrance, right? So if you're pushing B, yeah, maybe you get inside B, you throw a good nade, it'll stall the push, it'll still kind of have control. If they're pushing C... You yeah. need see long you get a kill but most likely a decent team will also come from garage right so you can't single-handedly stop a fish yeah it's not like the it's not like other maps yeah no this one is super different i have like a i kind of love it but i also hate it uh, because if you play ranked then you're just playing a c and then your a player dies odds are you probably lost the round no matter like most likely if they just have four people on site it's pretty hard retaking it yeah, it's, it's it's like one of the few like T sided or more T sided maps, right? Because it's uh, kind of crazy. Yeah, this is definitely one of the more T sided maps. I think in general, um, when you're playing this game, even at, like Immortal or like Diamond levels, I think it's easier for a team to work together on defense. So even if the map is attack sided, the odds of a team being able to properly execute on that advantage is like it's so difficult. Pretty low. Yeah, pretty low. Even if you're pre made. The odds of getting Lily to accurately execute a fake on A site for the rest of the team to hit C... It's not great, right? But... No, no one's doing that shit. Yeah. Especially <laughs> my Elo, I'm like, oh... I heard a noise A, there's five people going A. And I'm right like 80% of the time. Oh yeah, and the thing is, the perfect thing is if you're playing C and your A player dies and you have to play retake, you lose the round, it's their fault. No way it's your fault. <laughs> Uh, I mean, okay, that's <laughs> all right. Okay, so I want uh, basically what I want you to do when you play, always keep in mind clearing these angles, cross your placement. Um, and it's gonna be a little tricky to practice things like trading and properly swinging, you know, what wide swinging is. You can learn yeah. to do it, but the advantage of it is let's say there's one person on B holding this angle, right? And if two people pushing from A. I would then wide swing, take the duel. If I die, my teammate will follow up at a tighter angle, exactly where he is, and just trade the kill, right? That's how you execute a trade. And if you get good at trading, you'll just win games. But you can't do it alone. And oh, yeah, you need someone. I mean, I, I know you you play with some decent players, but odds are you in-house too, right? And like I see people playing those in-houses, and then when you rank, trusting your teammates and practicing trading might be a little frustrating. But learning when to swing will just give you kills and duels on their own. Especially because uh, since you, you're the fastest man alive and your reaction speed's through the roof. So you would just be able to out-aim anyone. What other characters do you play? You wanted to learn Phoenix? I think I wanted to pick up... I'm trying to pick up characters no one else plays. Like, essentially. Like, that's my logic is, like, I don't want to play the characters the people I play with the most play. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I think only like one person plays Phoenix or, or Zero. And for, I feel like Brimstone is one of the least played characters ever. Because it's kind of like a boring character. You know, he is god awful. Do you know how Brimstone plays post plans? We have rounds. If you play Brimstone on, and Bomb is planted on A and you're on offense, some rounds the Brimstone goes yeah. into under window and just does a molly lineup and plays his ult. Yeah, yeah. That's all he does. Like, how is that fun? <laughs> You'll win rounds doing it, but you'll also like hate yourself doing it. It's kind of like yeah, playing Garen yeah, in top lane, to be honest. Holy shit. <laughs> it, 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 actually, it's probably just Phoenix. I think Phoenix is the best, the best balanced duelist, in my opinion. I like, like him over every, everyone else. Sick.
I love Phoenix. Phoenix is really good. Phoenix is really rewarding to learn. Um, so so character like Raze, like duelists in general are kind of in a position to, if this is a situation where you can take a risk for a payoff, you'll do it. As a sage, yeah. if you do it and die, you're kind of throwing. And even then, if you get the kill, was it really worth the risk? Because you're missing out on a wall and two slows and a heal or two heals in a round. Oh, oh, yeah, especially if you have ulti, like you're playing back for sure. Right? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. Yeah, you kind of if you I mean, the thing is, if you really like kills, you can play Sage and get really good under because all you do is bait your teammates and no one will flame you for baiting as a Sage. It's pretty perfect. <laughs> what the fuck? No, that, that's how you play the character right. If I'm playing Sage and you're about to go somewhere, I could take contact or I just let you run in and die and then I get the kill and I did my job perfectly. Because I didn't take the risk. Huh. I got the payoff. I got the reward on the trade. And I could potentially get a res. Stuff like that, right? So res, slows, even heals are just super valuable. Okay, so let's talk Phoenix. Uh, do you know how to swap, swap character? I have no idea. You go escape, sheets in the top right. And then at the very bottom, you can pick your agent for next round. And you just pick Phoenix. Okay, so first off, I mean, obviously, the main priority of this character and why he's really strong is his flashbangs. Yep. His flashbangs yep. are really good to use. But the thing is, because they're kind of telegraphed in a way where if people know you're playing C, if you flash this three times later, like you've done it a few times, they're going to be prepared for it, you know? So the really important thing is like finding kind of like not set positions. You can get away super well with just like nading the same push. If they push you on C, you throw the same nade every time because you'll stall. You'll get info, probably damage and maybe even a kill. But on this, especially with the better players, if I know flash is coming, I just turn around from it real quick and I'm ready. But the cool thing about the character is you can do so many, like, if, let's say I want to flash C-Long, right? I can do so many yep. different variations of this flash. I can throw it to the right so it ends up behind me, bouncing it off of the box. You can do it above it. If it bounces, you got to be a lot closer, but... And you get... So what you... Like, bouncing is pretty hard. You don't have to bounce it. You can bounce it on the floor like that. You can just shoot it behind you in general, all the way behind you like this, and swing out with it. So if they're looking at you, they will get full blind, but it'll pop behind you, so they only get half blind. You can do, yeah, you can do it above. You can do it like a, like below. So the thing is, as long as you're pretty dynamic about your flash setups and how to approach them, you'll get kills off of them for free, especially at a lower rank. Mm. If you flash someone, you're pretty much good enough to stand still for half a second, put your crosser on their body in general, and just start spraying, and they'll get a kill. That's, not, that's really all you need, unless you're playing against like really good players. Because I think, no, 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 like, no one in, in my in my elo can turn. I promise, I can't even. Oh, turn. oh, guaranteed. No, exactly. That that's what I was gonna say is that how easy it is to use and get like reward off of a flash. It's so much easier compared to denying a phoenix the reward of a flash right so if you flash the odds of you flashing someone and getting a kill if someone's there is so much higher than the odds of them actually dodging it and then punishing you for it it's gonna take all they need to just punish or dodge it in the first place and then they're just gonna wait yeah or you just beat out like seven shots oh yeah people oh that's a very common response is i'm flash i'm gonna crouch and spray and hope for the best and uh but I like playing Phoenix in a way where you kind of play it dynamically, where you're not a great anchor. Um, you know what an anchor is? Someone who holds down the sight? Yeah, pretty much, right? So Cypher is a really good anchor player. That's yeah, kind of what you call it. So anchors don't move much. They're really heavy, so they won't leave the sight. So if you have a C anchor, it's the player that will basically be C every single round. You won't really see the Cypher mm -hmm. on A. He won't really be taking any off peaks in mid. He will be C every single round. So he is an anchor player. Like he he anchors C. You don't really want to do that as much as Phoenix because the more he has the value for it. Like if they push, you throw a Molly, kind of stall the push. But he's very good at kind of like aggressive play and rotations. Because when you have your ult, you can just ult and run out garage with the flash and get a kill and you won't die. You're fine. But if if they expect yeah. where the ult is gonna come from every time and they expect, okay. The Phoenix is going to flash and then Molly on C every time. Eventually, even bad players will start to realize how to avoid approaching the like how to avoid getting flashed when approaching the site. Or if you're actually getting too good at it, they will just never come to that web that site anyway. They'll just avoid you. Super common on this map. And so, the, for in my mind, there is two basic ways of flashing. So one is just you flash and peek, so it pops at the same time as you peek. And the other one is flash, and you wait with peeking so you don't get sprayed by someone blind. 
And as long as you kind of juggle those both two so they don't know, like, okay, every time this Phoenix Flash, he's going to peek instantly. You kind of just want to make sure they don't really know exactly what you're going to do. So if they're blind, do they do they hide? Do they spray? You got to keep on guessing. It's a little bit of a mind game. And then primarily, like, you use your mollies to stop pushes. You can use it to clear corners. You can use it to heal yourself. You can use it in so many different ways. And they're all super viable. Sick. Yeah. it's That's why this character is so fun, because you're actually one of the most, like self-sustainable characters in the game where you can take risks you can smoke you can flash and you can heal and you even get two lives in one round and that's super good too walling flashing absolutely and what what really helps with phoenix is especially when you practice these you know the counter strafing taking these angles where to put your crosshair then you know exactly where to flash and where to put your crosshair to peek where the person probably is and then just react to where they are based on the bright glow in their I face i think he's like the perfect counter strafing character because like you're pretty much taking the wide swing after every oh yeah you're, you're you're swinging all the time like if i'm with a phoenix and he flashes and you don't swing i'd get pissed off because it's kind of your job being that first person yeah, in taking entry. contact yeah you're definitely like an entry but you can lurk you can do all the other things that's why the character is so good because he's very versatile but if we're pushing C as a group, Phoenix better go first, right? He flashes and yeah. swings. Hopefully gets the kill. At least sets up a trade. All I know is I, I heard TSM Strat was pretty much playing this character with smokes. I was like, <laughs> that was funny. TSM, TSM plays the TSM way. They can kind of get away with doing so much because they just have so many players that are super talented at their designated roles and characters and weapons. Like, you have a Phoenix just owning on one side of the map, and then you have a Jet just never misses an op shot, getting two entries on her own, 1v5, like... So, you have a lot of room to work with. And that's, like, kind of, like... I'm sure that sort of, like, similar kind of explanation exists in League of Legends, too, where... If you're an ADC, you need peel. You need that space to play the game. And if you don't have space to kind of, like, play your character and utilize his kit properly, it'll be really hard to get value out of him, right? And... But a Phoenix... You can kind of create that on your own, right? It's really hard to play a Sage if your teammates can't hold anything or utilize your slows or get kills when they're stuck in it. But as a Phoenix, yeah. you kind of set yourself up and create your own space. So, like, if I'm peeking long as any other character, I'm kind of scared of the off. I'm kind of scared of someone lurking in the corner. But as a Phoenix, one flash, you basically have the control, right? Yep. And that is super good. So I think Phoenix and Rays are two characters that you can get super, super, like you can play those characters at literally every map. And if one isn't viable, the other one will be. So it's a really good pick of characters, especially if other people don't play them. And then you can also play Phoenix in a very supportive way. Like if you're playing Phoenix with another Rays, you can flash for the Rays, you know? You can help your teammates. And a lot of the thing is just knowing like how to approach certain, certain sites, right? So like how you want to approach taking this angle. So really common, let's go A-long. So a really, really common A-long approach um, that you'll probably eventually even see. It's super common in all the ranks I've spectated at some capacity is you will have a Cypher throwing a cage right here. He pops the cage. Phoenix walks in and just flashes out and peeks. Right? And oh. knowing how to approach that and knowing different variations of that approach is super important and really properly utilizing your character because I could swap Cypher, but imagine the cage is here, right? You can walk out here, they still won't see you, and you can walk out to the left. Yeah, you can get into that corner. And then you can flash and walk out to the right and peek it really wide. You can flash it late from over here. So many different ways. I think the counter strafing thing, actually, I didn't know that the... That, uh... Like... That's probably the most important thing for me. Because I understand the concept of, like, wide swing mm -hmm. and trading. And, like, using utility. But the counter strafing thing, I didn't realize, like how much you had to wait to make sure your first shot doesn't go to the moon it's actually so important sometimes you're like your shots are just like fucking insane mm -hmm. if you're counter strafing it's just you don't stop um i mean okay so so like there's this like grace period where you can kind of start shooting as you're slowing down and you can get kind of lucky you can be a little bit faster you can kind of still control your bullets after that that are pretty accurate uh it's pretty weapon dependent but on the phantom the best thing you can always do is to just stop the shoot, right? And it, the thing is, like, even if you tap a move key as you start shooting, sometimes you can just lose control of, like, the spray. So it, it really is a really fundamental thing that is super, super important. Is, like, taking these counter strafe, like, slicing the pie for all the angles, and making sure you stop before you shoot. But then aiming becomes a little bit more tricky, right? Because if you're playing most of the other, other games, you're just moving your crosshair towards the player 
right? All the time. Yeah, like, and you just spam me your fire button. Exactly. But in this game, you don't really move your crosser towards the player, but you move the crosser towards the player to match the position of your crosser and your character when you've stopped strafing. So it's not just putting your head, your crosser on the head. It's about putting your crosser in a place where maybe the rest of your movement as you finish your counter strafe or your wide swing will put your crosser on the head, right? So you don't really only aim with your mouse. You, you have to aim with your sideways strafing, your A and Ds, your counter strafes. And then also, you know, uh, you make sound when you strafe, when you take a wide swing. But if you take a smaller, like a pretty really small angle, uh, you won't make a sound. Uh, you'll be able to try oh. just by listening. Oh, so if I just do like the back a, a, yeah. a and D to peak, that doesn't make noise. Yeah, so think of it like the noise doesn't start when you don't hold click. Like clicking shift doesn't just cancel all noise, right? It's about the movement threshold. So you are below a certain amount of movement speed, you won't make noise. Sometimes it'll make noise and you can't hear it, just like client side stuff. But you can clear smaller angles and not make a noise and you can find that little like sweet spot. Like mostly clearing small angles, but it's still super viable, especially garage. Because garage, you clear a lot of small angles and you can get a lot of info from a small angle. Like if you're in garage, looking see. You can see so much off of three small strafes that make zero sound. <laughs> sounds, sounds clean. Sounds clean. Oh, did you did you see my 4K? Oh. You got 4K? Before this. Yeah, holy shit. Wait, hold on. Hold on. Well, I need my chat to pull this up. <laughs> I need to see this. Was it a double satchel out split A, a site? No, no, no. You're going to be... Oh, it's weird. My, my chat's telling me you never had a 4K, and I think yours is probably telling you the same. No, 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 no. My, my, my chat's trolling. Huh? Are you sure? I believe chat. I mean, you're a raised god. I don't know what to say. You should be coaching me. What the fuck? Is the Phantom so accurate? Yeah, the Phantom really is better. I think. I think that if you're better, like, I think preference matters a lot, obviously. But Phantom is just good because it doesn't have the tracers. And the odds of people not knowing where you're shooting from is way higher with the Phantom than the Vandal. So if you mess up your first few shots, getting punished is a lower chance. And it's super accurate. And its spray is easier to control. It's kind of just got everything on it. And the Oni skin is insane. Do you have it? Yeah, of course. Of course. Do you have it upgraded? Oh, I don't have it fully upgraded. Oh, I like. Oh, the... you got the secure one. Yeah, I like the I like the blue one. Okay, so if I tell you, if I tell you that I'm posted on an angle, do you know what that means? I'm posted CT. So, not that I'm in CT, but more so that you're watching CT. Right. Yeah, my crosser is placed uh... on CT. So if someone comes CT, I will play like. It will be on my contact, right? So, for instance, let's say you're playing right here and you're looking for someone running at garage. The bomb is planted on C. We're defending the bomb. You're sitting on me looking over here. And I tell you, okay, I'm on site. I'm posted CT. So, you know, no one can run up on you behind CT because I got that angle. That is just... Right, uh, right. But the important thing is, even if you're aiming on CT, when you really post it on something, what matters is cross replacement. And cross replacement isn't a thing that you do when you move only. But sometimes, here, let's do this. I'm going to swap teams real quick. And I want you to sit right here, where I'm standing right here. And then okay. just, I'm going to run out looking at you. And you're going to put your crosser where my head is going to be. And with a, like, kind of like adjusting for your reaction time with how much time you would need to shoot me, right? So I'm just going to wide swing. And I want you to just headshot me, yep. right? See how important that is to like, so I'm going to yeah. do it again, yeah? So ideally, on, you post go. this angle, you know exactly with your reaction time how where you, where to place your crosshair at head level to hit this shot and not have to do that, right? Because if I stop right there and shoot you, odds are you're dead. On, yeah. And a good way to practice this is actually like sitting in these angles and really having someone do it for you. You can do it with an op if you ever like if you like opping. You should definitely do it with a rifle so you can really prepare for the kind of like position you're gonna find yourself in. Because that's a pretty common angle to hold. And 
the difference between don't shoot this time the difference between getting the first kill and then getting traded and getting two kills is for the first kill to be an instant kill so you have a 50 50 chance of winning the second one right so you get uh... that guaranteed first kill because if you compare it to counter-strike multi kills in this game are a lot harder because it's easier trading with the slower movement speed and stuff like that so you can't kind of like jiggle and it's kind of how the game is designed multi kills are still super common right and these are like the situations you have to set yourself up for because if two people are pushing you they kind of know where you are they're gonna want to trade you and the only way you get both kills is either you like get that certain kill and then you kind of take a strafe back you kind of take a step to the left to wait for the next person but this is super important because especially on defense even on offense what's important is knowing okay with my reaction time where do i put my crosshair where will i find that instant headshot and then later on how close do i have to be to the angle to get a one shot from the phantom so at longer ranges the phantom will not one shot but at close ranges it will and a really good way of doing this so what you can do you don't have to go for like a one tap right uh, you don't have to spray it either you can kind of react to that point where you see him you can do a four bullet burst and as long as one of those bullets basically instant kills it's good you don't have to it doesn't have to be your first bullet especially when you're learning to do it when you're putting yourself in those situations offense defense the easiest way to get a kill is for someone to run into you and you're completely prepared for it your, your crosshair is where their head is going to be and it runs into your crosshair and you just click the mouse button yeah and an easy way to learn kind of like the distance on the phantom so if you click open the buy menu and if you hover over the the gun you have all this information about the gun right and you can see damage the damage bar it says which ranges it deals which damage you see that on the right side when you're hovering over phantom yeah so it's, i don't know what 15 to 30 meters exactly like. but the thing is if you're standing right here and you ping it says how long how far away the ping is so you use the ping as a measurement so that is 13 oh. meters away So you know exactly. Like you said, back to here. So if, I, if I'm coming from right here, if it's 15 meters, I don't know exactly how it works, right? So maybe if it's 15.1 meters, it might not one shot, but it still it's might. Like 15, it's like, yeah, yeah, it's 15. So yeah, so a really good way of measuring that is by pinging. Because when you ping, you'll see the exact distance from where you are. And you can do that with pinging on the map as well, right? So if like if you want to take a duel, but you don't know how, like, okay, he's in this corner, how close do I have to be? You just look at the ping. And the same way with the sheriff, if you play the sheriff, is uh Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's got, the guy I just switched to. Yeah, 30, 30, meters. 30 meters, exactly. Which is pretty far. That's so far, actually. Yeah. But like for me, if I if I sheriff headshot someone at like 32 meters and they live with five health after I headshot them, I kinda don't stop thinking about it for a week. So okay. it's pretty good to, you know, make sure you're that two meters difference. You are close enough to get the kill. Well, okay. Want... Now, let me tell you, you wouldn't be relying on your teammates. So this is this is what I mean by about baiting, right? And baiting, if you think you are better than your teammates in a lower rank, it's a little scumbag thing to do, but it will get you wins if you know how to bait people. It 100% will. It's pretty scumbag. You're setting your teammates up to get yourself the kills. But if you are more confident and you should be eventually when you're getting better, know how to bait a teammate right so let's let's simulate it right here let's say both you and i are running out of garage and someone's standing where you were killing me from if i run out in wide swing you want to know exactly how to transfer my death into a kill right so i run out here and shoot. exactly right you can do it far away you can do it close because far away and close is the difference between a headshot level and like shoulder depending on the guns right but the idea is you run up here and you don't run out at the same time. You take a little break, you cross her placement, you get ready, and then I'm starting shooting, and then you swing out before I'm dead. So while this person over here is still shooting at the first person, and just as he's about to like, in that spot where he can't kill you, you go and kill him. And you will yeah. hardcore bait your teammate. He will probably die because you're in gold, but you'll get the kill and you'll still be full health. So your next duel is still a 50-50. You're not at a disadvantage, right? Mm, so like, yep. when I play ranked, um. When, let's say this when i scrim i have to use my brain and i don't think that's as fun as just pushing everything and entering every single angle so when i play rank yes. i just always entry because that is just it's so much more fun running up dying because if i die i'm reading chat i'm listening to some music <laughs> i'm doing something else next round let's yeah. go like i did my job so i just get that out of my system in before scrims so i never do dumb shit in scrims so i make sure I, I like i go hard you know i swing i go super aggro but in reality the value of an entry at most ranks is not as valuable as ranking up those three kills right like if you get those three kills off baiting your teammates 
more consistently than you get the entry, you'll get more wins over time. And I'm not telling you to bait. I'm telling you to know how to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. So but you eventually have to follow up your entry. Anyway. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Like sometimes someone is just going to be in a position. They're going to get a kill. Like they get a pick and then they're just going to run out C. And you just have to be ready. Like, okay, he's running out C, playing all like wide swinging. He doesn't know where they are. Not taking his time. He's exploding out. You just got to be in a position to know how to bait when that you get put in that situation. Because if you brute force an entry every single round, you aren't entry characters, but sometimes you're going to be put in a position where it's not your job to entry, you know? And it's important knowing yeah. how to do both things. And then when you know how to do both things, your entry is going to become even better. Once you know how to like trade that kill, how to bait that kill, you're going to know how to set your teammates up for the kill as well when you go for the entry, right? Mm -hmm. So the important thing is, let's say you're two players in garage, you get a pick in window, right? And your teammate is right behind you and uh, right in front of you and he's just running out C and you know, okay, we're going to expose C. You got to know how to use that kill, like that death, potential death for another kill. Okay. And then also something that will help you a lot if you, if you play with groups um just a buddy system will help a lot right yeah staying next to people always yeah i mean you just have your friend you hold hands so you don't get lost you know you're on a school trip yeah. going to see site but the important thing is that you actually commit to it to the point where you can play because if you do and you entry and this person is behind you every single time naturally the trades will become a million times easier because they kind of know what to expect. Yeah. And you can like kind of plan like, hey, I'm going to, when I go garage, I'm just going to flash on the right and swing, right? Mm -hmm. But then sometimes maybe they want to entry too. Maybe they have a low buy. Maybe they don't have util and they want you to live. Maybe you're going in with an ult. You're back from your ult. You're going to go out again. It's important if you do it with your same teammates, it's really good to because you can actually practice trades and you will naturally win way more rounds just by not being caught out solo. You will get away with dry peeking so much with no util as long as someone else is next to you. Because I guarantee you, I've seen you do it too, is when two people are on your screen, you're not sure which one to shoot. And that happens a lot. Even in Diamond and stuff. I do it too. I'm like shoot yep. in between two people. And th that's the fact of this game where multi-kills are so hard that the odds of, let's say even double peaks are really good. So you can bait for a kill and set up a trade. You can also double peek, right? So if you know, okay, one person is, is in this specific spot here, you just both peek him at the same time to guarantee that kill. So you don't risk the trade. Where trading is more methodical, where the double peak is more like, we can kill him before he kills us, you know? And you don't lose the player. You don't even risk the death, basically. That's the idea. Because in this game, it's really hard, compared to Counter-Strike, to just kill both people in two headshots real quick, like a spray down, right? It doesn't yeah. really happen that much. It's kind of a play when you get two people in a success, like in a quick spray transfer. So if you stick together and just, it's just that game, right? It doesn't have to be a dedicated duo player that you queue with. It's just like... You kind of like, hey, let's, uh, you want to work A together on offense or maybe play like this site together? It goes a long way uh, because as long as both of you are consciously playing with each other, you're naturally going to try to do more team-based plays. Because if you're up here, you're kind of close to B trying to go in, how you approach it when you're solo is going to be very different from how you approach it if you know you have a teammate behind you. Just naturally, that's just how you're going to think about it. Okay, so I don't think I can really tell you much more like philosophy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you understand and I think that... There's always going to be the point where you just have to learn how to execute on it. So when you play, you know, you focus across your placement, you're focused on your counter strafing, uh, focus on teaming up with someone else and be aware of what the role entails in terms of entrying and being the second entry to trade a kill, right? Just just think about it, right? Just just be aware of it. Kind of know that you're not going first now because so then sometimes you might be able to run into sight looking at a different angle than you otherwise would. Just as long as you're kind of aware of it, thinking about it, you'll just learn how to adapt in the next situation you're there, right? So I think... You should queue up ranked if you have people to play with. Wait, 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 what do you mean? You, sh you mean I, I should I should solo queue, right? You can solo queue. You can play with people. You can five stack. Okay. I think that the best way to coach in a game like this, right, is like you work on those fundamentals. And then when you kind of understand them, you go to the next step. Yeah, yeah, I agree. So what you're saying is I should queue up a rank. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, and I will just be sitting here watching your stream, probably order food and eat, and get paid doing so because my viewers are simps. But I won't get a live stream fails eating my food because that's what you do. <laughs> Dude, it's not a... <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, I'm queuing up. I got it. You playing playing Phoenix or, or Raze? I'll play Phoenix. Okay. And then if you get another map, I think I'm going to just give you tips on how to approach 
the area of the map you're playing. Yeah, that because I, I don't know how to play raids on some maps. Descent is weird. I play garage, but I don't know if that's right. Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll just watch and then I can easily chip in and kind of tell you how to approach the next round and how to approach that scenario you find yourself in if you want. And then you can just ask questions. Ah, uh, split. You know what? Kind of, oh, okay, never mind. I'm leaving. Wait, wait, wait. People, <laughs> you don't like split? I hate split, dude. I feel so claustrophobic on that map. But split owns for raids. Raids is really good at split. It's actually my favorite map to play Raze on. Uh, he dodged instantly! Hell yeah, someone's a real bro hooking you up on that dodge. Is it really that bad? Uh, the thing is like, at, in ranked and like immortal... Oh! I, I don't want like playing, playing it, but I don't know. Okay, I, I know what you mean. Yeah. It's just it's so easy to abuse the like the defense side of that map and get really easy kills, get really easy rounds, right? So you can be better than the enemy team, but then your teammates can kind of just give away a kill to an op that's literally sitting basically AFK, and because they just have like that much of a map advantage in that scenario, and then the other half goes, and you're basically always gonna play these like immortal level games, so like 12-12. It's gonna be overtime so often because it's just. Overtime, defense wins. And then the next overtime you swap, the defense wins again. So you just go overtime again until you vote for a draw a lot. Or it'll be like a 13-11 game, 13-10 games. And they're just, they get pretty boring. Go. Yeah. Alright, okay. I'm, I got, I'm split. Race. Again. Race and Phoenix are both really good. But Race is really good on okay. the map, but he already locked oh, it. Oh fuck, I already locked No, it. flame Sorry. him until he dodges. <laughs> what the fuck? Phoenix is really good on this map too, actually. Phoenix is, uh, the way, where do you like playing on, are you, are you defense or attack? I don't know if you can't see yet, huh? I, I can't tell. Yeah, it's not a stream. Um, if you're on defense, where do you like playing? It's good. But yeah, Phoenix is good. Um, okay, so you're on attack. I think you can go and do a lot of different things, right? You can be versatile. A good thing to practice on this map is on an offense Phoenix is mid control. Using your flashes to push the mid players backwards, kind of like into B heaven, taking the vent control with a flash, kind of like mauling the close corners, and then you can kind of group up with your team. So, okay, what do you buy at the first round? Is it just utility and then armor? Personally, I buy curveball ghost, uh, flash ghost. That's what I buy. Uh, but you can buy classics, you can buy armor classic with flashes and a wall. All these things work. It's really on preference. Because honestly, in this game, the pistols are so random that you can just own someone with a classic, you can own someone with a ghost. And you just play the gun that you're more comfortable with. Both are super viable. The thing is that if you do buy abilities, it will transfer in better to the other rounds. Because if you don't use them and you die, you'll still have them next round. But you lose armor and you lose a ghost. Oh! Wait, he actually almost got that. Something you should think of when you're playing Phoenix is your your flash makes a very distinct noise and it's easy to hear, right? And yeah. if they hear you flash twice, they know you don't have any more. So sometimes when you're like working kind of slowly, working a position for map control, sometimes just having the flash is better than using it just in case someone is in a dumb angle, right? Because they know you have the flash, so they're going to try to hide from it. They're going to play a position that isn't that good because you're going to want to hide from the flash. There's just the threat of having the flash will kind of like give you the advantage. And then you can use it like when you're like, oh, I'm really scared of this angle. Like I flash mid, it's kind of clear. They might be peeking it. My teammates would probably trade me if I die. And then, you know, you're pushing somewhere scary. You have the second flash ready when you really need it, you know? I might play Among Us tonight, yeah. I, how the fuck do people ask me for Among Us more than they ask me for Valorant at this point? Am I just an Among Us streamer now? Like, okay, turn off my stream. Just turn it off. I don't ask, turn just turn it off. All middle. Dude, your just frames drop so low? That's crazy. You must have lagged there, huh? Dude, your frames drop so low? That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, 
Oh yeah. Uh oh yeah. No, I can teach you something to help with that actually. Just pick a teammate and blame them. No, I can teach you something to help with that actually. And uh, it, wait, so you wait, that sounds like is that sounds like you're toxic. No, you just say it to your stream so you can't get banned in Valorant. It's foolproof. <laughs> like I'm here to tell my stream that everything is your fault. Their fault. Of course. Because that was you got body blocked, right? Right? <laughs> you got Wow. I got owned. Wow. I got owned. So right there, if you look at your combat report, you see you didn't actually flash him, or it would have said enemies flashed, and the number you flashed. Oh, well, he's holding a tight enough angle to where it wouldn't hit? Yeah, so basically, right on that flash, you kind of want it to bounce on the wall on the right, so if he's peeking at all, it'll hit him. So you can kind of just take a little step out and move a little bit more to the right, so the flash will go further towards the wall on the right side of you, right? Yeah. But it won't bind sight then, it'll bind like only that rafters part and someone posted. So you just gotta make those trade-offs, you know, knowing like which angles you wanna peek. That's what I said about preparing your crosshair placement and where you wanna peek. And sometimes you'll throw that flash and they won't be there. But you'll take the jiggle, like your counter strafe, crosshair placement there, and if they're not there, you don't peek sight. So even if they're not blind on sight, they won't see you anyways, right? Mm. Okay. But you would have done that if the Sova didn't body block you, right? Or the was it the race? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So much better. Because oh, my immortal teammates know that if you blame your teammates, you're eventually going to rank up. Because goddamn, the Diamond Three Jet One tricks are the best. Hmm. Fuck. Can you use stream sniping chat? I don't want to say it because stream snipers don't exist, obviously. Dude, this specific Chick fil A I'm ordering from, they don't have like. Chick fil A has like. um. They have like these, uh. Like the, the potato chips. The waffle potato chips. They're so good. But this one just doesn't have it. Is it just me or are the Chick fil A fries awful? Is it mixing up his flashes? He's mixing them up enough. On offense, it's more so like if you flash A main every single round, right? He can do them up and down a little bit, but the way he's approaching them is totally fair. Damn, what? Holy shit. Oh my god! Wait, what? <laughs> Get the ace. Oh, fuck. He died. Huh? He did. Does he win the round? No! So right there, right? You played super good. I think you got a little greedy for the ace, but in that post yeah, point, oh, of course, I would too, hundred percent. I would, Fuck. I would go for the ace if I don't get it. Someone else's fault, right? Surely, but the way you get it, you can play a very safe angle playing off the bomb on post points. It's really good just playing like a good position that can tap, like that can kind of like they have to commit to really pushing you to find you. You can peek off of them tapping the bomb. Just play like let the time play out, and you'll win that round hundred percent. If you were back in the backside, like the corner, and you just sit there, and then you hear a sound, and you peek him, and he's not there, you molly the bomb and hide even more, he won't have time at the next, like, when the molly's gone, basically. Just playing with your teammate, playing a basic angle, holding that post plant. Free fire, I like it. Definitely not the. I was a bait. He just five headed that guy. He could have broken the dart like that. Who needs 
this fourth place? I left when I saw you pick up a specter holding a phantom. Call it D. Call it D. Hell yeah, let's fucking go. That is a juice play. That's super good. I like it. Yo, Breach, uh, one enemy remaining. Y'all know where he's at? Right, hunt, hunt is that. Hunt, 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 hunt his ass down, bro. The only difference there is if he takes that, like, if he takes that peek with a jiggle nice. and clear, like, clearing the corners with a good crosser placement, he 100% kills the Sova, right? Because he'll just get, like, the, the body shots and the headshots instead of leg shots. <laughs> This <laughs> is a bad code. Oh, dude, wait, wait, wait. I was like, wait, wait, my first or like my a third BX game. It was nice. I just, uh, suck. It was nice. No, that went well. You played really well. You had some, uh, some rounds for sure that were, uh, lag. But then, I mean, you had really good approaches to the scenarios. Like your flashes when you're peeking, when you're ulting and pushing, playing off your teammates. You did it pretty good. I mean, you definitely had, like, a bunch of just really good rounds, too. Right? You got your consistent kills. Uh, you didn't just throw your life away that many times. Just a, just a handful at most, right? But then you also had rounds where you got 3Ks, 4Ks, and just followed one rounds. Even by doing damage to four different people. Installing a push with a molly. If you were approaching every single scenario right. Even if you ended up dying, the way you were approaching a lot of those scenarios was good. The way you're flashing, the way you're peeking with the teammate behind you, right? Going first off the flash. You're approaching the scenarios right, which is way more important than the result of, like, doing it. Because you know what's right. And then when you get more comfortable with like that peeking, peeking from sideways and where to put your crosshairs, they'll just start working out more, you know?